Okay, whatever. Let's make this again. Of course, all settings are gone. I hate when this happens. And yeah, we are good. Okay. Yeah, as I'm as I'm looking at this, I I really I really would make motor under this board. Let this be a pulley. Let me save this pulley. Let me constrain this pulley. And let me add um, belt. Oh man. Kind of like about there. Well, this would be amazing. Absolutely amazing. But the problem is that it will add a cost. And I don't want to imagine screwing up pulley when drilling the holes in. And maybe, maybe I wouldn't have to face mill it, actually. Now I'm trying basically to make this check smaller. Because smaller means cheaper, actually. But it's not really possible with this modified step model, so I will make it up once again from scratch. Okay, so here we go. It's just a few holes and it's good. And as I will find later, there is a dimension of this chuck or yeah there is dimension when the when it's just too small for the size of the arms and I happen to adjust it to the size when it can not hold that much big pieces actually so what I'm trying to say that what you will have, what you will find online as uh, 3D of this late will be, uh, maybe, maybe I will change it and then publish it. So yeah. So that said, there may be some modifications of this slate. Oh, Jesus, man, that's inappropriate. So now, as you can see, the bearings are too close together, basically. So you can... So the holding diameter is basically limited by these bearings. 
it's not that small actually that it's about or is it let me see Oh, I really cannot see the number here, but... For example, this is why I am not a good designer, because if I... If I am a good designer, I would just make up some sketch and then model them, but no, I am just changing some values and see what happens, and something like that, but... Yeah, it's, it's also a valid way to work, actually. But, you know, okay, and that's about it. This is the limit. If you want to hold bigger pieces, you must have a bigger check. I'm making a hole for locking bolt. And this should transfer the torque from the motor to the shaft. So the problem is that how can I mount this motor on the board? So I don't have I don't have to have coupling mechanism here. And it will rotate freely without any stress on the shaft of the motor. I also forgot to make a video of this part, but it's nothing that much, just making one piece of sheet metal, and it looks like this. So the idea is that you will mount this uh, sheet metal on the motor, and on the board that there will be only one bolt that will secure the motor from rotating, but this motor will have tendency to make up and down stress while rotating if you if you understand me so i am now making a bigger hole and you will have to use a special bolt that there will that will secure rotating that sheet metal with the motor but allowing it to move up and down so this is basically the coupling mechanism and with this the motor can wibble wobble around and the check will be rotating perfectly in one axis. And also you would have to add a few washers just to prevent accidentally motor sliding out of the track or something like that. I don't think it will happen. Now this is basically what the what one spindle may look like. There are just few problems now. One for example is... How you actually tighten this chuck? That's quite a good question actually. These circles are meant to be laser cut. So the idea is that you will have one hole that will go kinda this way if you can see it. It's not really easy to model either, not only explain. Okay, it will go from the outer ring to the inner ring at an angle, and by tightening that screw, you will tighten the workpiece in the in the chuck. And for this to work, you can make teeth profile onto the or on the inner ring. So I will make an array of the teeth. And this is very crude idea, just explanation of how this should work or how this could work. And basically you must you must basically tweak the angle of this of this screw. And it will be very hard to manufacture anything like this, but, well, trial and error, basically. And to make this clear, I will, I will grind this screw a bit. Of course, you cannot modify screws unless you save it as different part. And 
and here you go. This I I think this should work. Maybe it's not ergonomic very much, but Okay, the second thing or the second problem of this setup is that this may be glass light, okay. But blowing, uh, nah, not very much, because how would you blow into the tubes? That's quite a good question. And it took me quite long time to design something for that. And the idea is that this inner diameter of this housing is quite narrow. So, let me make tube slightly smaller than the inner diameter of that housing. And on this tube will be an O-ring. And the idea is that you will stack this tube in between the two housings. You will drill a hole to the shaft and then you will drill a hole to the outside of the shaft. That will be on the section of, of the shaft that is in between the rings. And this is not some uh, critical vacuum application or something like that, or a critical pressure application, so the seal may not be perfect, but it certainly will work. And let me download some nice fitting here. Oh Jesus, this page is extremely slow. Extremely slow. This is what, maybe 10 times the speed? Okay. Now, I think that this is pretty neat. There are many more different ways how to do this, but I think this is very good. Okay, here it is in the section view. This is my spreadsheet for calculating the price for machines. I used it at work at one point. Okay, let me rewrite some things here so you can actually see what this is calculating. It's not necessary, but I will do it. And I'll have cal I have calculators for different material materials here, and mainly for laser cutting from our from company that is making laser cuts for us. Now I am calculating the price for each component. Man, these bearings cost less than three bucks for a piece. That's absolutely unbelievable. That's the UCP 204. Yeah, these prices are in Czech currency, by the way. So I will make a calculation for US dollars here. I will use 28 Czech crowns for one dollar and Yeah, just making this formats right. I never really cared about that. And man, what are you doing, man? Stop, please. That's unbelievable. Why? Okay. Well, here we go. Some unnecessary 
modifications for this sheet. But as you can see, now we are less than 70 bucks for one spindle. That's unbelievably cheap. Okay, this is not a final price, but once again, it's cheap as fuck.